For some reason I've been focusing more on older shows, so I figured, fuck it, let's talk about a current airing anime to keep things varied. And you know I'm all about keeping things varied. This week I'm going to fanboy at an anime called Mob Psycho, which is possibly one of my favourite anime this season, just behind ReZero. Now, emphasis on the word fanboy, this isn't a review, this is pure biased excitement. So go look for a well-written analysis of this show elsewhere, like Reddit. Now before unleashing my inner fanboy at you all, I should state some facts about this show. Mob Psycho, before it was even released, had a fair amount of hype due to it having a pretty famous author. Mob Psycho's original creator was One. Yeah, the guy who wrote One Punch Man. And due to the sheer fact it's been done by the same author, it's been compared to it a lot. But let me just state that besides the art style, comedic humour and having overpowered derpy protagonists, they're two completely different shows. One Punch Man is all about parodying every shonen anime by introducing us to a character that can literally one-shot any existence with his pure physical prowess. And due to his OP-ness, he seems really bored and jaded with his life. Mob Psycho is about a character who also seems bored and jaded with life, and he can destroy spiritual entities with his overpowered psychic abilities. Hmm. I'm kidding, they really are different. Unlike Saitama, who doesn't make a fuss about his lifestyle, with him living a half ass life, not giving two shits about his surroundings because of how broken he is, Mob is the complete opposite as he gives too much of a shit about his surroundings. And it's basically about him trying to change into someone who doesn't rely on his abilities and wants to live a normal middle school life. Now, without let the fanboyism start. Now, from the get go, with the first episode, you see an incredible fight between a silhouette and some extravagant looking monsters, which is pretty much only eye candy at this point due to not knowing the context. But damn, did it look cool. For first time watchers, the first thing you you'll notice is the art style, which everyone is torn between it being good or bad. I'm on the good side. Yeah, it doesn't have a super detailed art style that is pretty popular these days, but I give it big points for uniqueness. It adds personality and makes some scenes even more humorous in my opinion. And thanks to Bone Studios, we get to see this derpy art style come to life with some of the best works of animation this year, from the eye candy action to even the slice of life parts. Okay, so it pretty much has it all for me. Unique art style, amazing animation, comedy that suits my humour, entertaining action and good music. Oh, the music, just putting it out there that the opening at first, I wasn't all that into and now I'm singing it. Or more like humming. And the ending song, more specifically the ending video itself is just amazing to watch. I heard that one person was behind this, and props to that particular talented animator. One is pretty good at mixing comedy with serious moments. Tone shift is an art he has mastered pretty well, which is impressive, because some shows aren't very good at it. But even though I've said all that, my favourite part of this anime is none of those. I mean the delicious icing on the cake, but what makes this anime especially enjoyable for me is Mob himself. The main character. Because although we get all these funny moments and amazing fighting scenes, the anime almost always focuses on the changes Mob goes throughout the series. He wants to change and I'm pretty sure the series won't end when he defeats the final boss, but when he finally accepts himself, or when he gets to date his crush. I don't know, that seems to be his main motivation. His first step into changing himself was to join a body improvement club in hopes to get buff and attract his waifu, which come on, let's admit we've all done, right? Bearing in mind he has no need for any of this. He could take out the world's strongest with just his psychic abilities. And that's just one of many quirks, besides being used by almost every character in this show. At least the characters are somewhat likeable. Um, I should mention the negatives too. My English teacher told me back in the day that if I wanted anything higher than a pass, I should always point out the negatives too. I don't know why I said that. No one needs to know that. And I'm still going. So the early issue I see here is that they're skipping some parts of the manga to get to the juicy main story. I mean, we're missing minor character developments, but, but I'm not too fussed. Um, another negative is that some people might not like the art style because they're tw uh, I mean because they prefer the more higher quality A1 picture type of art. I think that's it. So, you know, watch it. This is also a horror comedy, by the way, which probably won't apply for this season. But if there is a second season, boy, you better clench your